Have you ever wondered where you really stand with God? Are you overcome with feelings of guilt because of things you've done wrong? Are you tired of religion that focuses on rules that you can't keep? Have we got good news for you? It's time to listen in on some casual conversation with Mike Kapler and Joel Brzezinski and discover what true freedom is all about. This is Growing in Grace. Growing in Grace is on the air. I'm Mike Kapler. <laughs> Along with Joel Brzezinski, and thanks for joining us here on our weekly podcast. Hey, Joel. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> I thought I would just leave you hanging there. <laughs> wild, wild. That was a rush. Thank you. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, it's it's been one of those weeks for me. I uh, I had some um, a couple, three different problems around the house, fixing the plumbing under the kitchen sink, under the bathroom sink, fixing a door handle. And uh, sometimes, you know, when you have a week like that and you get to uh, something like this, and the, the mind's not necessarily focusing right, but it's it's still okay. But you just got to laugh sometimes. <laughs> Yeah, and how that doorknob got under the kitchen sink, I'll never know. Yeah, well, it was, it was, uh, oh, that's a long story. No, yeah, it wasn't under the sink, but. Uh. All right. Hey, uh, want to talk about sin? Oh, man, sin. That's my favorite subject. <laughs> okay, let's not talk about that. Let's, let's, let's talk about something else. A game changer for me, Joel. We've been talking about game changers in recent week, in recent weeks. One of the big ones for me and for you, too, I'm sure, was, uh, Hearing, <laughs> hearing verses out of the Bible, and now remember, I, I'd been a Christian for quite a few years, as as you had been, and I've been around. I thought I'd heard not everything, but I, I'd heard a lot of things. And one thing, but I, I had never heard up until uh, about fifteen years ago or so, was some of these verses I'm about to spit out here, real quick, about the commandments and the law, because there was this mentality that living the Christian life was repenting from my evil works and performing good works, you know, trying to be obedient in that way, being obedient to the law, the commandments. Those are the kinds of things that I thought God wanted out of me, was trying to live a good life, you know, relying on my own abilities to do good and avoid bad. And that that was basically the extent of my relationship with God, as far as I knew it. But here's just a few that I want to rattle off real quick here, Joel, that just blew me away when I started finding out about the, the grace life. Um, 1 Corinthians fifteen fifty six: the strength of sin is the law. The commandments actually strengthened sin in my life. Hard to believe. Romans 7, sinful passions are aroused by the law. The very thing that I was told to try to follow was the thing that was messing me up. Sinful passions were aroused by the law. Romans 8, 2, we are now under the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus, and it has made us free from the law of sin and death. The very law I was trying to follow under the new covenant, it was finally revealed that that was the law of sin and death. Um, the ministry of death is what Paul called the commandments. We're not under law, but grace in Romans 6.14. Delivered from the law in Romans 7.6. We died to the law, Galatians 2.19. Um, Romans, or I should say Galatians 3.10. Those who rely on observing the law are under a curse. You try to follow the law, observe it, you're under a curse. And uh, Galatians 5.24, the commandments uh, gave birth to bondage. Um, I'm not sure if that was Galatians 5.24 or 3.24. I might have put that down wrong. But in any case... Paul was making the case uh, comparing Sarah and um, who's the other lady? Joel, help me out. Sarah and uh, Hagar. Yeah, thank you. Uh, but he, he didn't just say that the animal sacrificial laws gave birth to bondage. He didn't just say that the dietary laws gave birth to bondage. He specifically pointed out the moral laws written on stone gave birth to bondage. These were the things I'd never, never heard of throughout most of my Christian life. Mm -hmm. That's, you know, cast out the bond woman and her son. That was, um, <laughs> uh, uh, who was the bond woman in the bond movies? I remember talking about this one time. It's not coming to mind right <laughs> Not this <now>. again. <laughs> but I, I never really thought about Hagar as being a bond woman. But anyway, she's the, <laughs> she's the bond woman that he was talking about. 
cast her out and you know what her her son is oh obviously it's ishmael but um he when he says cast out the bond woman and her son cast out the law hagar represented the law and her son that was what the law gave birth to which was bondage Paul, you know, Paul says, cast out both the law and the stuff that it gives birth to, the, the fruit of the law, which is bondage. And so these are, I mean, if a person reads through Romans and Galatians and uh, the various things that Paul said in the Corinthian letters and and, and uh, even Philippians where he talks about how he had formerly trusted in the works of the law and he had to count it all as dung. I mean, he had to... He had to count it as cow dung. That definitely blows a person's mind because I know a lot of people. You open up your Bible and wherever you read, you're supposed it's what you're supposed to do. And so they see, well, everyone knows that you know the Ten Commandments, and everyone knows um, all the rules that you're supposed to keep. And so uh, people don't realize that these verses that Paul made an overabundant case <laughs> for. The fact that we had to be dead to the law. He said in Galatians 3.12, The just shall live by faith. He was quoting from the Old Testament that was looking ahead to when we would live by faith. The just shall live by faith, yet the law is not of faith. And so if we're trying to go back to the law in any way, shape, or manner, we're not living by faith because the law is not of faith. These are things that I really do wish that uh, people in the church would 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 understand, uh, because so there is so much bondage. People are in chains because they're trying to. They think that they're supposed to keep the law. They know that they can't. Although some people are kind of self righteous and they think they're doing a pretty good job, but especially the people who know that they can't, yet they're struggling on the inside. Uh, they're full of tor- turmoil. A lot of, for a lot of people, it leads to depression. This is real stuff. This is real stuff that happens in people's life. Depression, health problems, all because they're trying to do something that they were never meant to do. And they were meant to die to the law, actually, uh, so that they could be joined to the one who gives them freedom, that is the Lord Jesus Christ. Yeah. You know, uh, when we talk about legalism another another word for what we're talking about here it's it's simply a system where a person seeks to gain god's acceptance or blessings by what they do and the fact is that god has accepted you and me we we are considered accepted we are loved god has declared peace with you and me and why do we have peace because we're, we're justified by faith to me to talk in basic terms here Faith and law, faith and works are opposite of each other. Years ago, I was taught that faith and fear were opposites. But, Joel, I, I believe that love and fear are technically opposites based on the, the, this new covenant scripture I'm looking at. And works and faith are contrary to each other. And so, because we are justified, we've been made righteous by faith in what Jesus did and not in what we do, we have peace with God. That is a beautiful thing. When you enter this place of rest, and I don't know where you are right now, but I'm telling you that you have come to a place where rest is available. The question is, will you believe it so that you can experience it? I mean, firsthand, not just want it, not not just something that you hope for, but actually experience it. Have you ever sat in a chair or some piece of furniture that was just so comfortable. Or maybe you, you've you been sitting in the same place for a while, and then you kind of have to move around a little bit and, and get comforted again in a different position. And when you do, it just feels so good. Hmm. Well, this is what it's like having this kind of peace and rest with God. It, it's just you're always in that place where it just always feels so good, and it, and it just never stops. Mm-hmm. And I think a lot of people you know, don't have that type of peace. Not because it's not available to them, but because they don't know. You know, they're they're ignorant of of what really happened at the cross. They're ignorant of really what is available to them. It's just, it's just I'm just thinking about this. You know, the problems that I had this week with the door, <laughs> with the door now. The reason I was having problems with it is because I had left my son and his friend at home while I went to the store, and uh, while I was gone, they went outside and uh, locked the door, and so they. <laughs> They locked themselves out of the house. Now, what they tried to do, being ignorant of the fact 
that they could have gone to – my son didn't know this – could have gone to um, our neighbor's house and gotten a spare key and come into the house. He, he was ignorant of that, so they didn't have the knowledge that they needed in order to get back into the house. Well, instead, <laughs> there was this um, piece of plastic out there, like a like a sheet of paper, but it was plastic. I don't know where they got it from. They they tried sticking that in into the key hole to to try to open it. That didn't work. So my son's friend goes and gets a stick, mm. sticks it into the keyhole. <laughs> It jams it in there. So when I got home, I couldn't even get in that door. But, but anyway, <laughs> it, it's all because of ignorance. And, and ignorance isn't a bad word. It's not a nasty word. It's just a word that, that means that a person lacks knowledge. And uh, the knowledge that people need is that through the cross, God's peace is available to everyone. And so all we need is that knowledge and that understanding that we have peace with God. Like you say, not through law, not through works, not through anything that we can do, not through looking good on Sunday morning, but we have peace with God through faith. And so in that little parable, I assume that your son's friend who put the stick in the in the keyhole, he represents the preacher. <laughs> yeah, he's always jamming the wrong things down yeah. people's throats. Trying, trying to keep people from getting <laughs> into in. their ears. Yeah, exactly. Uh, <laughs> so, Romans 3.10, Joel, as it is written, there is none righteous, no, not one. Well, I'm, I'm glad I didn't stop right there, because that's mm. where a lot of people will stop, at least in their mind. There is none righteous, no, not one. And then down just a little further, it goes on to say, now we know that whatever the law says, it says to those who are under the law that every mouth may be stopped and all the world may become guilty before God. Therefore, by the deeds of the law, no flesh will be justified in his sight, for by the law is the knowledge of sin. But now, but now the righteousness of God apart from the law is revealed, being witnessed by the law and the prophets. So there were none righteous at one time. There were all who, everyone was guilty. But now the righteousness apart from the law is revealed. You mentioned ignorance before, Joel. The Jews and many people today, Jewish or not, are trying to establish their own righteousness because they're ignorant of God's righteousness. They just don't know. And so this is, uh, this is wonderful news for those of us who have struggled with this. And boy, we didn't get everything in here that, that I wanted to this week. So I don't know if we may need to cover some more and, and uh, expand on this thought about freedom from the law and what we've been led into. Yeah, we can always do that because um, as, as our uh, old pastor used to say, all we have is time. There's always time. <laughs> there's, there's, we just we have time. So we'll, well, if we don't do it this week, we'll do it next week. And the way that he preached, even the next week he wouldn't ever get to it, even in his hour of preaching. So, But anyway, so we'll get to it when we get to it. And in the meantime, uh, just uh, want to let everyone know thank you very much for listening. And uh, we'll be back next week with more of these game-changing thoughts, these things that really revolutionized our Christian lives uh, because we realized uh, some really big things about the gospel. So stay tuned with us for that next week right here on Growing in Grace. This has been Growing in Grace with Mike Kapler and Joel Brzezinski. Heard online through various internet sources around the world each week. To access hundreds of past programs, visit graceroots.org. Share it with a friend and listen again next week for more Growing in Grace.